The House will come to order. Prayer by the chaplain. In our tradition, three institutes are recognized by God, the family, the place of worship, and the government, given a charge by God. Let us turn to God. You who created everything from the beauty of this day to the snows that overwhelm, from the fields that produce to our cities that thrive. We run so fast and scramble so hard and argue with such passion that here and now we need to be still. To be still and recognize that you would speak to us if we would be quiet, that you would show us our great value as your children, if we would stop and to look across the aisle and see sisters and brothers who love not only this country and state, but would come to love one another, I pray that you would allow these servants of yours to come to know one another, not to set aside their convictions, but to temper them with wisdom and compassion. Bless this state through these, your servants. Let us do this day the work that you have appointed us and not worry beyond measure for what tomorrow will bring. Bless us all, the mighty and the small, the unknown and the famous together. Bless us as your children. In the name of the one living God, amen. The chaplain for today is Reverend John Crosby from Christ Presbyterian Church in Edina, Minnesota. Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The clerk will take the roll.
The clerk will close the roll. <clears throat> Quorum is present. The clerk will read the journal of the preceding day. The Journal of the House, 90th Session, 2018, 82nd Day, St. Paul, Minnesota, Wednesday, April 18th, 2018. If there is no objection, further reading of the journal will be dispensed with and the journal will be approved as corrected by the Chief Clerk. Hearing no objection, the journal is approved as corrected by the Chief Clerk. I did. Reports of standing committees and divisions. A copy of this order of business has been placed on each member's desk. If there is no objection, the reports will be adopted. Hearing no objection, the reports are adopted. Second reading of House Files. <clears throat> Second reading of House File number 3688. Second reading. Introduction of bills. The following House Files have been offered for introduction today. The Chief Clerk will report the House Files and give them their first reading. Introduction of first reading of House Files 4439 through 4450. First reading, House Files 4439 through 4450. Oh. Did I give you all of this? Messages first, then first reading. Okay. Messages from the Senate. <clears throat> Message from the Senate, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> I hereby announce the passage by the Senate of the following Senate files herewith transmitted. Senate file numbers 2484, 3466, and 3596, and the message is signed Cal R. Ludeman, Secretary of the Senate. First reading of Senate files. First reading of Senate file number 2484, an act relating to transportation. Hertos moved that Senate file number 2484 and House file number 2739, now on the General Register, be referred to the Chief Clerk for a comparison. Hearing no objection, so ordered. First reading, Senate file number 3466, an act relating to public safety. Nash moved that Senate file number 3466 and House file number 3997, now on the General Register, be referred to the Chief Clerk for a comparison. Hearing no objection, so ordered. First reading, Senate file number 3596, an act relating to biodiesel. Anderson P. moved that Senate file number 3596 and House file number 3523, now on the General Register, be referred to the Chief Clerk for a comparison. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Calendar for the day. The first bill on the calendar for the day is House File 3551. The clerk will report the bill. <clears throat> House File number 3551, number one on the calendar for the day, an act relating to the Safe at Home program. I recognize the member from Washington, Representative Lomer, to introduce your bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. House File 34, or 3551 is the Safe at Home Administration Bill. Safe at Home is an address confidentiality program administered by the Office of the Secretary of State. Safe at Home was created in 2006 to protect victims of stalking, domestic violence, sexual assault, and others who fear for their safety. Minnesota is one of over 30 states with similar programs. Minnesota's Safe at Home program currently serves over 2,600 individuals representing over 1,000 households. The program works by giving participants a legal substitute address, a post office box, to use in place of their physical address. This address can be used whenever an address is required. So as the Safe at Home program passed the 10-year mark, the program is proposing an administration bill that would address issues that have come up over the lifetime of the program. This is a technical bill that has resulted from years of feedback from those interacting with the Safe at Home program and is intended to provide more clarity and transparency to the program. So the bill was brought to me by Secretary of State Steve Simon, and I thank you for your support. <coughs> there are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House File number 3551. Third reading. Discussion on House File 3551. Seeing no discussion, the clerk will take the roll in the bill.
Clerk will close the roll. There being 124 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The member from St. Louis, Representative Murphy M., for what purpose do you rise? Point of personal privilege, Mr. Speaker. State your point of personal privilege. Mr. Speaker, members, on your desk is an obituary and a story about former Representative Gustafson. Earl Gustafson was a politician, a man of service, a good person throughout all his life. We got news this, that he died. And today's society that news was not shocking. He is 90 years old. Those of us from the North Country just had our 8th District Convention. And at one point in time, he ran for Congress. And there were four candidates. And he didn't get the endorsement. And the endorsed candidate did not win the election. But Jim Oberstar did. Earl Gustafson was a representative when Duluth had six representatives. The 59th district, the 60th district, and the 61st district. Earl Gustafson's district was the 60th, the center of Duluth, the hillside, the residents, where there was diversity. The 61st was out at East. The two representatives from the 61st District at that time were conservatives. The Western District was 59th, and the Western District included the suburbs, Hermantown, Floodwood, Brookston, Grand Lake, and all the townships around there. But Earl Gustafson served as a liberal in the finest sense of the way. And Earl Gustafson had a, a great influence on Minnesota taxes as a representative. And then he was appointed later to the tax court. And then he didn't serve on the tax court for a while, and he just, just practiced law, so to speak. But then he went back to the tax court. And he was chief judge of the tax court of Minnesota. And what a perfect place for Earl Gustafson to be. A person of the people traveling across the state, sitting on a panel of people, of, of court judges, to decide things that ordinary citizens brought to them that they didn't think was right about taxes. They could, didn't have to have lawyers as representatives. They just told their story to Earl and the two other judges that traveled with him, to all parts of the state. Of course, their main office was right over here. But the real work was done with the real people out in the state. And that was Earl Gustafson. Earl Gustafson I first knew as a dad. I was a teacher, you know, at Duluth Central. And Earl Gustafson had graduated from, from Duluth Central. And after Earl Gustafson married, they lived in that area. 
And I was the teacher of Kim Gustafson. And I remember her so well because she had so many opinions and such a good sense of humor. And when her parents came for conference, I knew that she was reflecting them. They had a marriage of 66 years and eight kids. And those kids were all individuals and all taught to be good citizens in whatever they chose to do. And the best dad and the best mom for those kids was Earl and Donna. And last night when I saw a little bit of George and Barbara Bush being remembered, because Barbara Bush, we celebrated her life yesterday on this floor. They had the same qualities. Two people deeply in love, pass passing their reflections of the life onto their children and their children carrying on. After I got, was here a few years, Ben Gustafson appeared as state representative from Duluth, Earl and Donna's son. How fortunate. Then there was another time that Earl's brother was a politician and was a state senator and had defeated me in a special election for state senate. But how fortunate I am that he won and I lost because here I am today. And it's not about me at all. It's about the people we meet and the people that give us the examples. And the people of Minnesota were served well for over 70 years by Earl Gustafson and everyone he touched. Let us remember him. Let us have a moment of silence and celebrate with joy what we have learned about him and from him. Members, please rise for a moment of silence in honor of former Representative Earl Gustafson. Members, we do have a couple of former members in the chamber today, uh, serving from St. Joseph uh, from 2005 to 2012. Please welcome former Representative Larry Hosh. And then also joining us today uh, from the city of Minneapolis, uh, serving from 1999 until 2010, and serving as Speaker of the House from 2007 until 2010, uh, former Speaker Margaret Anderson Kelleher. The next bill on the calendar for the day is House File 3249. The clerk will report the bill. <clears throat> House File number 3249, number two on the calendar for the day, an act relating to public safety, the first engrossment. Recognize the chairman, the member from Fillmore, uh, Chair Davids, to introduce your bill. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. House File 3249 is known as the move over law. Uh, in Minnesota, we have the Ted Foss law that many of us that have been here for a while supported. That's where if you have a four lane where you have at least two lanes in one direction and there's an emergency vehicle on the side or in one of the lanes, you need to get over. What this bill does is it says that on a two lane, if you have one lane in one direction, you need to slow down. If it's an emergency vehicle, and it also includes uh, road construction vehicles that have flashing lights, utility vehicles, and tow trucks. Uh, this has been through several committees. I'm not aware of any opposition. And Mr. Speaker and members, I'd stand for questions. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. <clears throat> third reading, House File Number 3249. Third reading. Discussion on House File 3249. The member from Goodhue, Representative Haley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of this bill. I represent many line men and line women in my district who are often out in our winter snows and our spring rains and in dangerous conditions day and night to make sure that our power is back on. So I thank Chair Davids for introducing this bill, and I urge your support. Further discussion? The member from Wright, Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members, and Representative Davis, I just want to thank you for bringing this forward, and also just to acknowledge the memory of Ted Foss, who was my classmate. We went to Bagley High School together. My brother, Brian Daniels, Representative Daniels, and I both graduated from the Bagley High School, and he is honored. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Again, I just wanted to rise to acknowledge Ted Foss's life. He was my classmate at the Bagley High School. My brother, Representative Daniels, and I both went to school with him. Although he was sort of in between us. He was about six years older than me and about six years younger than my brother. So kind of right in the middle. But uh, a good trombone player, a good policeman in our community. And um, he was dearly loved. So thank you for your work today, Representative Davids. The member from Fillmore, Representative Davids. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I should also add that this was brought to me by a union lineman uh, with Excel. Uh, many of the co-ops, as they came in the cooperatives, electric cooperatives, this was their number one issue for the, for the year. I thought that was uh, interesting. But uh, this, this bill uh, can save lives, and I'd really appreciate uh, member support. Further discussion on the bill? Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. The clerk will close the roll. There being 124 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. <clears throat> the next bill on the calendar for the day is House File 2835. The clerk will report the bill. <clears throat> House file number 2835, number four on the calendar for the day, an act relating to transportation, the second engrossment. I recognize the member from Candy Ojai, the bill author, Representative Baker, to introduce your bill. <clears throat> Thank you, Speaker and members. I uh, am proud today to bring House file 2835 to um, kind of continue our journey that we started on at the beginning of this session to talk about something that is difficult for us, and that's Minlars. Minlars and, and, the, and the damage it has done to a lot of folks around Minnesota. But today is a day that we want to start taking the first step to repair a lot of the damages to our friends, 
our neighbors, back in our communities uh, that we all know as our deputy register offices. And the 3,200 full-time and part-time employees that have been put through the ringer in the last 10 months. Um, we have lost a few offices that have not stayed open. We have offices that have had enormous turnover that have, they've never seen before because of the incredible pressure and the stress emotionally uh, on so many families around Minnesota. And today we get to take the first step and start repairing some of the damage done because of some very bad decisions and planning on how to roll out a MinLARS system. Folks, uh, what's being handed out are the runs that you will see uh, to the deputy register offices. So you can, you can get a glimpse of what we are starting to return to the offices from their financial losses. This by no means is all they need. They continue to struggle every day with a system that is still not functioning the way it should have been. I also want to make sure that um, the folks that have started this journey with me 10 months ago uh, also get a lot of recognition for the work that they've done too. Um, I want to appreciate the work of Chair Paul Torkelson, our Chair of Transportation, who has been there through every one of our meetings. Also our, our famous nerdy guy, uh, Representative Jim Nash, who knows how to talk the talk with understanding rollouts and understanding launches. And uh, Representative Nash and I were in the, in the Minlar's war room a few times talking about uh, why this isn't looking like it's going to go very well in the very early days. But especially I really want to thank, um, oh, and I also want to say uh, a thank you to Representative Hansen and for his work on this in a bipartisan fashion that um, um, was needed badly because most of us have been out visiting with our deputy register offices. You have listened to them. You have heard their complaints, you've heard their concerns, and you've brought it back to us, and today is the first day that we do that. So, uh, members, again, this $9 million comes out of the D, uh, DVS special revenue account. I think it's going to a very, very worthy cause. We've got more work to do, uh, and with that, Mr. Chair and members, I'll take further questions, but I would hope to get a lot of support today to say thank you again to our uh, Rep deputy register offices that have uh, worked so hard through this very difficult time. So thank you, Mr. Speaker. There is an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. <clears throat> Hansen moves to amend House Bill number 2835. The second engrossment as follows, and the amendment is coded A5. Recognize the member from Dakota, Representative Hansen, to introduce your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, the A5 amendment is a, a short amendment. Uh, in looking at the bill, the bill wouldn't go into effect until uh, the next fiscal year on 19, July 1, 19. So what my amendment does is allows uh, the funds to become available uh, in this fiscal year. So uh, Representative Baker mentioned that there are some deputy registrars that are having difficulty right now. Uh, so this would be uh, make those dollars available now. And then it would still, so it's not 9 million each year in 18, a fiscal year 18 and 19, but 9 million, but making it available now uh, for those folks that need it. And I would ask for your support. The member from Candy, Ojai, Representative Baker, to the amendment. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker and Representative Hansen, I, I appreciate this amendment. This is a very good amendment, and I, I also support this. The key of this is getting it out faster and quicker, and with the help of Representative Hansen, this is a good idea, and I totally support this amendment. Thank you. Discussion on the amendment, the A5 amendment. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor of adoption of the A5 amendment signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The motion prevails. The amendment is adopted. There are no further amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. <clears throat> third reading, House Bill number 2835, as amended. Third reading, as amended. Discussion on House File 2835 as amended. The member from Dakota, Representative Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, uh, thank you for that support for that amendment. I think it showed strong support for our deputy registers and getting dollars now. I think the question and the concern that there, there is on this side, uh, or maybe around the aisle, is that where the dollars come from. And I know this bill is 
uh, one of several bills that is going to be moving. I would ask uh, uh, Representative Baker and, and the majority as you move forward on this, uh, personally I would prefer if it came from the general fund. I think there may be some challenges uh, with this coming from DVS in the future, but as this prog progresses and as there are the omnibus bills that are going forward, I don't want to make, I want to make sure we're not shorting that we end up with a, a low, maybe Mr. Speaker, It's not my phone, <laughs> but I think your comments silence the chamber, so please proceed. If, uh, as you move forward to look at using general fund dollars for this, uh, I know there's a variety of other packages that are moving uh, forward. I think it would be better served from the general fund, but I know that this is what is here in front of us now. Uh, this isn't just providing for expenses that were incurred, but it also provides for uh, some lost revenue. So general fund dollars would be better, but this is what's in front of us here, and I will be supporting the bill. The member from Brown, Representative Torkelson. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to first thank uh, Representative Baker for bringing this forward and for his hard work on this issue. Uh, the other members uh, of the House that have worked on the issue, but most of all, thank the Deputy Registrars. They're the ones that have been on the front lines for this entire process. They're the ones that have to deal with the public every day. Uh, I think they deserve an apology from the state of Minnesota for being forced to work under these conditions with a system that has been uh, extremely difficult for them to work with. I look forward to uh, working hard on this issue as we move forward to get the system working and our deputy registrar is back on track. Thank you very much. The member from Carver, Representative Nash. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Members, I, uh, I can't thank uh, Representative Baker enough. This is a much needed bill. Uh, you all have deputy registrars in your community. They are hurting. And they have been hurting since day one, and I think that this is a good first step. There are other bills that are coming that we need to move on as well. But please do support this and recognize that this is also a great segue to talk about how we develop technology here in the state of Minnesota, that we cannot develop technology to roll out without testing because it's ultimately going to hurt the people who run small businesses across our state. So, members, please vote green. Any further discussion on House File 2835 as amended? Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill.
Clerk will close the roll. There being 123 ayes and one nay, the bill is passed as amended and its title agreed to. Mr. Speaker. The member from Hennepin, Representative Carlson, yes, for what Mr. purpose do you rise? Mr. Speaker, a point of uh, personal privilege. State your point I, of personal privilege. Uh, I have, uh, Mr. Speaker, some special uh, guests here today. They are uh, students at uh, Minnesota State uh, Mankato, and they are all members of the United Nations International uh, Club. And uh, the first one that's uh, standing here is a name that's probably somewhat familiar to a few of you. His name is Lyndon Carlson. He, hap he happens to be my grandson and is the president-elect of the uh, group. Uh, the woman standing next to him is uh, Kylie Duncan, and she's the current president of the uh, group. And uh, also uh, present is uh, Greta uh, Shako, um, Kish Ajibushi, and uh, finally uh, Nathan uh, Hardnett. And, uh, they're visiting the uh, capital today, and uh, I think most of them are involved with uh, uh, majors in international relations or political science or social studies. So um, if you get a chance to greet them, uh, they're a good group, and they've taken a tour of the capital. Thank you. Report from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration. <clears throat> Pepin from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration, pursuant to Rules 1.21 and 3.33, designates the following bills to be placed on the calendar for the day for Monday, April 23, 2018, and establishes a pre-filing requirement for amendments offered to the following bills. House file numbers 3389, 3833, 2743, 3280, and 817. <clears throat> Pepin from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration, pursuant to Rules 1.21 and 3.33, designates the following bills to be placed on the calendar for the day for Tuesday, April 24, 2018, and establishes a pre filing requirement for amendments offered to the following bills House File Numbers 2391, 1415, 3548, and 3552. Motions and resolutions. There are copies of the non-controversial motions at the House desk and online. If there's no objection, we'll take action on these motions first. Hearing no objection, the motions prevail. Members, we do have a member who will be retiring from the chamber, and as is customary, we do allow that member to give a final farewell speech. So it's my honor to, rep uh, to recognize the member from Hennepin, Speaker Paul Thiessen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You can wait till after. So. <laughs> Thank, you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, well, I am uh, really excited to be moving on to the, to the Supreme Court in this new effort, but I have to say this has been a week of pretty deeply mixed emotions uh, because I really do love uh, the Minnesota House of Representatives. Um, it's a place where amazing things can happen, you know, miracles really. Uh, because of the work that we do here that can really change people's lives all across the state. And um, there's so many times when, um, you know, the words and ideas that people uh, raise here, I do think call out the very best in what Minnesota is all about. And so uh, I, I am leaving with very much mixed emotions. 
Uh, I do want to thank some people to, to start out with. First of all, of course, my family, my wife Karen and my kids Emily Griffin and Evan, and my mom and dad, who uh, you know are an inspiration. And you all know how big a sacrifice our families make to let us do the work that we do here. Uh, and so I want to you know thank them so much for allowing me to do that. Um, I want to thank my legislative assistant Ursula Griska, who is here. Uh, we were randomly assigned 16 years ago and uh, have been together ever since, so I'm very lucky to have that kind of steadiness. But um, there's no one more competent or common sense or calm, uh, and I don't know how I'm going to hold it all together, frankly, uh, when I leave here without having her uh, keeping track of everything. So thank you, Ursula. Um, and just on that note, one more plug for the two to one LA to member <laughs> ratio. I think it would be a good idea. Uh, Um, so there's a lot of other people uh, that have helped uh, help me do some of the work that I've done. Um, Joanna Dornfeld and Carrie Lucking and Jamie Tincher and Zach Rodvold, uh, who's here today. Thank you, Zach. Uh, Mike Howard, uh, Jamie Makepeace, Catherine Thompson, Bryn, um, Sasha Bergman, Abu Amara, Dan Pollock, and Jess Nyman. And of course, the amazing Kate Prushek, who I've worked with for many, many years. Uh, and the irreplaceable Mike Charbonneau, uh, who uh, was an incredible font of wisdom and support. Uh, so I want to make sure I thank them. And I also uh, want to thank Representative Murphy, um, who was uh, an incredible partner and for her counsel and her friendship during some really amazing years. So thank you, Aaron. Um, okay. And uh, I want to thank Pat uh, and Al before you and the whole staff for uh, your advice and kind of keeping things on track for all of us here. Thank you so much. Uh, you, you know, you don't know until you do some of our work what a big role they play uh, in making sure that the work we do here gets, gets done. Uh, I do want to thank Governor Dayton uh, for many things, I guess, um, but for, <laughs> but uh, really for his tireless leadership over the last seven and a half years. And, um, you know, I have to say in all my years of elected service and politics, uh, he is really the one person who, more than anybody else I know, really, uh, and surprisingly based on his background, but gets ordinary Minnesotans and kind of what their pulse is. And uh, he uh, has done amazing things and served them so well, served the state so well for so long. Uh, so thank you, Governor. Uh, I want to thank my classmates from 2003. Uh, we came in with 44 new members. Over a third of the House was new the year we came in in 2003. Uh, and there are only six and soon to be five of us left. Um, but Representative Hoppy and Representative Lesh, uh, Representative Nelson, Representative Erdahl, and my seatmate, Representative Hornstein. Uh, and each of you has done such amazing things to help shape the state of Minnesota. So I, I'm really proud to have learned a lot with you and, and, and grown up together here. Um, Speaker Doubt, you know, we've discussed many times kind of uh, the unique role that we play, uh, that people play as speaker, and that not a lot of people can uh, understand exactly what that role is all the time and what, uh, what that role entails. Um, but I do want to say that you have handled the role, uh, and certainly the way that uh, we've been able to work together with class and grace, and I really want to want to thank you for that. Um, and I do want to just, and I'm almost done with you, thanks, but thank just a few past members uh, who I served with. First, uh, Margaret is here. Margaret Anderson Keller, thanks for being here. Um, she uh, was a, a, well, a good friend, first of all, and a compassionate leader, and really, I think, a model for all of us about one thing that's so, so important, and that's focusing on actually getting stuff done for people and being effective. And uh, that was kind of your watchword, uh, and you always got that done. So thank you, Margaret. Um, and then two people, you know, I grew up in Bloomington, uh, and there's two uh, former members who used to represent Bloomington that I want to acknowledge. The first is Ann Lincheski, uh, who was probably the wisest um, legislator uh, I know. She was the person that I would go to, and you know, Joyce, you kind of understand how this works. When you need to get something through the caucus, Ann was the person I would call on, because then everybody would kind of go along with stuff. Uh, she was smart and persuasive, um, and, uh, and so her wisdom and advice have always been invaluable. And the other person uh, is Dan, Dan Larson, who was my seatmate uh, and my uh, mentor and my state senator for some years, and uh, a really, really great friend. And then the last person I just want to recognize is Tom Huntley, 
uh, who many of you, some, many of you served with, but really the true gentleman of this house, but who taught me so much about health and human services and, uh, and being a legislator and a good human being. Um, so there you go. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of moments that I reflect on as I've kind of thought it over the last week, and I don't want to really talk about many of those, although, you know, one in particular that, of course, stands out for me was the vote for marriage equality, uh, which I think was, um, was the one that I will remember most, uh, just because of the uh, dignity with, I think, people handled themselves on the floor that day and all the people that were here, and um, so um, that will stand out. But I just want to reflect more on, and briefly, I hope here, uh, but on this institution as a whole. And, um, you know, we often forget, I think, as we rush through the day-to-day -day work of legislating, uh, what a profound responsibility we have and um, what a great privilege is this. You know, there's only been about 5,000 people in the 160 years of our state who have been able to sit in these seats. And, um, you know, and I, we often forget that, I think. And, you know, for me, the times I remember that are kind of, first, either those quiet, moments, you know, when you're here late at night negotiating a conference committee report or a final deal and you wander the corridors and look at this amazing building and read the quotes on the wall, you know, that starts to sink in a little bit about what a profound um, privilege it is to be here. Or it's times like we had on Monday in Representative Garofalo's committee where we took on two pretty tough bills and I thought the legislators and the, um, and the people that came to testify handled things in exactly the right way, uh, where we actually dug into the issues and tried to understand them. And I wish more people could see the legislator, legislature operating in those moments, uh, because I think they would see what this place is really about, which is serious people taking on serious issues in a meaningful way. Uh, and um, so uh, anyway, um, so I guess the thing is don't take this work for granted, uh, because it is a great privilege to be here. And remember that this place, you know, existed long before we were ever here and will exist a long time after us. And we should take care of it as an institution. And then, now this is my one substantive kind of plea, I guess, at the end. And that is I do hope that we take the time to really focus again on making sure that uh, we improve the process. It's something um, that can be improved and it's been both parties' problem and it's both parties' responsibility to step up on and fix it. Uh, to make sure that we give conference committees and committees the power that they that they deserve, uh, to make sure we bring transparency back into our process, that we have you know things like a 24-hour rule, that we apply the Data Practices Act and open meeting laws to ourselves, like we apply to every other unit of government. Um, one of our most important jobs right now, I think, is to restore people's faith and belief in the integrity of our government and its processes. And I think we all have to take us uh, up that mantle, I guess. Uh, and to try to restore accountability and people's belief in what we do here. Um, you know, and as a former leader uh, who has been on both sides of this issue and, you know, abused it in the past myself, um, I know that it's, it's really going to be up to the rank and file members to make this change and to make this change in culture. So I hope that we can do that. Um, I have two more things. Uh, the first is I have looked back over this last week. One of the things that jumped out at me uh, is that many of the proudest moments I've had here uh, were taking those hardest votes that we ever take, which is when you have to vote against your friends and against your caucus. Um, but they're the votes that you're going to remember uh, in, my, in my experience. Uh, it's hard, but that's when our system, I think, shows that it works the best. And I hope every one of you has the chance to do that at some time. Uh, but I just do want to recognize Representatives Loon and Garofalo and Hamilton who have taken some of those hard votes uh, in the past. And, um, Anyway, I, I hope we all have, a, again, a chance to, to take those kind of votes. And the last thing uh, I want to say, that wasn't really me breaking up, that was just my voice, um, uh, that the greatest parts of this job, uh, really, and I think probably all of you would agree, is the chance to go out and meet with your constituents uh, and travel around the state uh, and listen and hear kind of the fears and the aspirations of Minnesotans. Um, you know, those interactions, I'm sure you would agree with this too, have absolutely changed me uh, in how I see the world uh, and instilled in me a deeper understanding of trying to see the world, you know, through someone else's eyes. And I think that's what, in the end, our job really is here. And um, I wish more Minnesotans would have the chance to go out and have those kind of conversations and interactions with so many people. Um, you know, we have some very serious racial and gender and disability and poverty gaps in this state. Uh, and it's a crisis and we have to really make that our top priority. Uh, and we need to listen to those who are affected 
uh, to come up with those solutions. But I also you know, want to say that there's people from all backgrounds who are doing incredibly amazing things all across the state and who are, ins you know, inspire me every time that I go out and talk to them. Uh, and I think, again, if every Minnesotan had the chance to go out and meet people like I've been able to meet people, uh, their hope in the future of this state would absolutely be restored because it is a pretty, a pretty amazing place. Uh, I feel incredibly blessed to have grown up here and all the opportunities the state has given me. Uh, I feel incredibly blessed to have been able to serve with all of you in the House of Representatives. Uh, it's a treasure and a debt that I know that I can't ever repay, and so I just want to thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you for your service, Mr. Speaker. The member from Hennepin, Representative Pepin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the former speaker would the former speaker yield to a question? Just, I'm just joking. I had to. I just had to ask that one. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 1 p.m. Monday, April 23rd, 2018. Representative Pepin moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 1 o'clock p.m., Monday, April 23, 2018. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. The motion prevails. Representative Pepin. Um, just a brief announcement, Mr. Speaker. There's cake in the retiring room, and everyone is welcome to join us to celebrate uh, Justice Thiessen's promotion. Representative Pepin. I move that the House do now adjourn. Representative Pepin moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The motion prevails, and the House stands adjourned until 1 o'clock p.m. on Monday, April 23rd, 2018.